Hi, this is Ryan with Front End Audio, and thank you for checking out our featured software series. All right, so now we're going to take a overview look at Slate Digital's FGX Mastering Software plugin. Um, very cool interface here. It's uh, kind of got a, a neat kind of Pro Studio retro look to it. Um, if you look, basically the components are the way it's set up. At the very top, you have your browser window. This is where you can actually browse through the different presets. And you also have this uh, little button here with a wrench on it. And this is going to be for saving preset information, renaming, deleting presets, assigning it to slot A and B so that you can switch back and forth between different settings to see which one applies itself best to the mix, as well as uh, creating new banks for keeping your presets in. You also have your save and save as button. So if you already have a preset set up and you make a few tweaks to it, you can just simply save it. Um, or you can save a new preset, save as, and then type in the name here. So next to that, you do have your settings. And this is just going to be your overall settings as far as wheel sensitivity for your mouse. Um, as far as your display value controls and uh, your access to your user's manual. And then you have the ability to switch back and forth between your A bank and B bank on whether which preset you're using is really going to serve the need for the specific song that you're working on. Next to that, or just below that, you have the first component, which is your compression. Uh, you have a power button, so you can cut it off or on. It's kind of neat how the lights around the knobs and on the VU meter cut on and off. Uh, you do have settings, so you can, you know, make different uh, settings to how the you interact with the, the different knobs and the different ranges, whether you want a 1 to 5 ratio, a 1 to 10, or 1 to 20, getting into more almost limiting. And then your threshold ratio, whether you want to be able to just have your threshold at negative 10 or all the way to negative 30, as well as your max threshold volume or value. Um, so that's kind of, you know, little tweakable settings there that you can do. You have your attack knob to adjust, obviously, the... Uh, speed in milliseconds of how quickly your uh, compression kicks in after it's reached the threshold, as well as your release settings. And then you have your ratio knob for how much compression you're going to be applying. And then, of course, your threshold knob for, you know, setting uh, the threshold of when the actual compression is going to kick in. And then you have your VU meter here that will input or display your input level, your output level, and your overall gain reduction. Below that, you have your level uh, device. And this is kind of a multifaceted and intelligent limiting device here. It, of course, has its power button, so you can engage it or disengage it if you'd like. You do have settings here, so you can set your level range and link your low punch to detail knobs if you wanted to link those together. Um, the first aspect that you will see is the low punch and detail settings for your transient control. And this is kind of, you know, a transient shaper. It uh, allows, first of all, for more low punch energy, more depth or less depth. So you can really kind of affect just the low feature, the low energy of your mix versus, you know, affecting the overall mix. And then you have detail, which will affect how the transients respond, you know, whether you're going to be softening them or whether you're going to be adding more clarity to them and just overall detail to the mix. Uh, your gain knob here basically is amplification. That's going to be how much gain are you giving to the overall mix to increase the overall volume of the mix. Next to that, you have your dynamic perception. And what this does is it adjusts your dynamic perception. Just that. 
um, you know, when you start to compress and you start to limit, you really you're you're squashing down the transients and you're bringing up the RMS and you're losing some of that dynamic range, some of that life. And this is a way to be able to like maintain your dynamics or the perception of your dynamics uh, while you're compressing and limiting without, you know, just squashing the life out of your mix. Next to that, you have your ITP settings, and this is the intelligent transient uh, processing. And this will allow you to, if you go up to the hard setting, allow you to bring in more attack and make the transients stick out more and be sharper. Or if they're already sharp and you want to tame them a little bit, you can bring them down to the smooth setting or anywhere in between to really just shape your transients in the, uh, in the mix. Uh, next to that, you have your dither. So if you are, you know, changing uh, your sample ratio and, uh, and bit depth and you need some dithering there, you've got it. You also have your dithering settings. Now, one of the things that I did skip over was this constant gain monitoring. This is a very cool feature because there is this misconception that louder is better, and that's very rarely, if ever, true. So what this constant gain monitoring, monitoring allows you to do is when engaged, everything you change within FGX will still maintain the same level of the raw stereo file. So you're not hearing that, you know, if you're increasing the overall mix by 3 dB or, you know, 4 or 5 dB, you're not hearing that volume difference. You're actually hearing the same levels. So when you go between bypassed and engaged, you can hear what the software is actually doing and if the changes you're making to it are beneficial so you can make the right choices when really trying to master the record and bring, or master the mix and bring that song to its final proper stage. And it's just a very cool thing because this is a device that is meant for improving mixes. It's not a weapon for winning the CD level wars. So it's it's a very cool feature that allows you to make the right choices to make the mix proper instead of, you know, being, you know, mis misled by the volume differences or any perceived differences that might be there. Uh, the last section of it is your metering. You know, you have your on off, so if you don't need the metering, you don't need to use it. If you want to cut it on, you can cut it on. You do have independent settings in here throughout to adjust your RM, your RMS, uh, and just basically how the uh, meters are going to work for you, so that you are going to be able to get the proper reading for your mixes. And it can get really in depth in how you can use this, whether you know you need a a specific setting in your metering here. And you do have multiple settings that are already kind of preset. But if you want to, you can go in here and change things. And you can see right here when you bring up your settings folder, you have the different tabs. And it corresponds with the buttons down here. These are the presets uh, for the metering that they already have set up. And of course, you can adjust these if necessary for creating your own preset and uh, how you're going to work in your given uh, whether it's uh, just mastering one specific song or whether it's mastering a complete uh, CD. So that is the basic overview of it. It's uh, It can get very in-depth, but it's actually a very simple uh, plug-in to use once you get used to it and uh, very, very useful. It's it's become a very uh, important plug-in in my home studio, and uh, I absolutely love it. So. Hope that uh, gives you a good explanation of the features that this plugin offers. Again, thank you for joining us for our featured software series videos. For more information and for all your pro audio needs, check us out on the web at www.frontendaudio.com. Thank you.